Hello, hockey fans! Welcome back to the Neutral Zone here on IE Sports Radio. So much to go over here on this Tuesday night in the middle of November. We've got seven games going on right now. We've got two more on the docket for tonight. Lots to break down there. We've got a scoring fest going on in some arenas, while in others it's still relatively quiet. Eh? I think we've got lots more goals coming on the way. I think collectively the goalies just decided they needed to take the night off. Now that we're almost two months into the season, nearly to American Thanksgiving, we've got an idea of what teams are surprisingly hot and what teams are surprisingly cold. We'll take a look at that throughout the evening tonight. Some teams, like the Islanders or the Bruins, are absolutely killing it right now. Other teams, like Columbus, Philadelphia, yeah, they're not necessarily doing what we thought they'd be doing to this point. We will talk about that. And then, of course, you know we've got studs and duds. And the Hall of Fame introduced six new members as well last night. We will break all of that down for you. All that plus more right here on the Neutral Zone. Do not go anywhere. And good evening, everyone. I am Adam Karnick. Zach Puplis will be along with us in just a few minutes. I'll explain that here in a minute, but we're going to we're gonna get you started off with just me to get the show started tonight. Lots to go through tonight. You heard me break it down a little bit there during the introduction. Thank you so much for being here tonight on this Tuesday night. Always, always, always a busy night in the NHL on Tuesday night, and tonight is no exception. We've got seven games currently going on right now. We'll keep you up to date on all of those, and then two more are getting set to drop the puck pretty much as soon as we wrap up here tonight. So lots to keep track of tonight, lots to be going through, plus some interesting stories and tidbits from throughout the week of hockey. Uh, Six new Hall of Famers got introduced last night in Toronto, and of course there's always some interesting stories that come up from that. I've got one in particular that I think we'll all get a little bit of a chuckle over. And then if we've got time, of course, we've been we've been doing it to start this season so far and I don't see any reason why we'd stop. Of course, some studs and duds from the last week of hockey. But before we get too much further into things. Of course, we do want to acknowledge our sponsors here at IE Sports Radio, and so we'll do that right now. Of course, for the last eight years, IE Sports Radio has been bringing you amazing content, ranging from interviewing legendary athletes to bring you tailor-made shows, to bring you tailor-made shows, dedicated to all major sports cities around the country. All the while, we've continued to be by the fans, for the fans. And with your help, we are ready to take the next step. When you go to our website, iesportsradio.com, you'll see our Patreon link with five different tiers. The first one starting at just $5 a month. This donation gets you shout-outs on every one of our shows. Higher tiers include IE Sports Radio merchandise, access to our podcasting university, and even a chance to be featured on a segment of our flagship show, The Defining Moment. Thank you all very much for continuing to make IE Sports Radio your direct feed for all that is sports. And I do want to thank our Patreon supporters right now, Bay Area Raised, M. Los Great, Key to the Gate, and Anonymous. Thank you for your continued support as we go through. It allows us to do things like what Pierre Moss is doing right now over at our sister station, USRN, as he is 
doing play-by-play for the Kentucky-Michigan State basketball game. Now, the reason I bring that up is you may have noticed that it's just me right now. Well, Zach Puplis, being a Michigan State alumnus, a proud Michigan State alumnus, he could not bring himself to separate himself from that Kentucky-Michigan State game. And admittedly, it's a one-point game with a minute left. So rather than have him be focused, you know, 90% on the basketball game, but then also trying to, you know, pretend to keep a conversation going with me and talking about hockey. We're just going to let him be focused on his on his basketball game for a little bit. And then he'll be here after that. So, you know, there's a minute left in that game. Now, you know, a minute left in a basketball game is kind of like an intermission in a hockey game. So even though there's only a minute left, I wouldn't be surprised if it's, you know, a good 20 minutes before we hear from Zach. So we'll keep we'll keep things going, though, as as we roll along, we'll start off as we normally do, as we typically do. Let's just take a look at the scoreboard across the NHL tonight. As I said, we've got seven games going on right now, uh, various states of how far along into the game we are. Uh, Just getting set to start the third period in Tampa Bay, the Stars and the Lightning are tied at three in that one. And neither team has led by more than a goal in in this one to this point. So very back and forth going on there down in Tampa Bay. Very early in the third period, we have New Jersey on top of Montreal, 3-1. to one. That game taking place north of the border in Canada. Uh, the Devils have led the whole way there. Jack Hughes with a pair of goals in that, in that one. Uh, just past the halfway mark of the third period in Pittsburgh, it's the Maple Leafs four and the Penguins two. John Tavares scored his 400th career goal in that game earlier tonight. Congratulations to John Tavares. That was the opening goal of that game. So Toronto up four to two in that one. They have led the whole way in that one. They were up three to nothing, uh, before, Pittsburgh made it a little close. Tampa's pulled pulled away again a little bit. And then just about halfway through the third period in Buffalo, it is the Vancouver Canucks 5, the Buffalo Sabres 3. Apparently goalies were optional in that game. Eight goals so far. I'm sure Patty Bax, host of the Buffalo Huddle, is not happy to see that score. She was having a... She was having a rough, you know, just a, a rough day overall on her show, and unfortunately, this is not making any better. I should, I should clarify. She did an excellent job on her show. Unfortunately, all the teams in Buffalo have just led to a downer attitude, and in, and the Sabers are just keeping that stre- that uh, streak going there. Then, about halfway through the third period. Also in Florida, it's the Panthers 2, the Capitals 1. So finally, we've got a home team in the lead. The uh, The Florida Panthers there uh, have led the whole way. They led. They scored the first two goals. Uh, Barkov, Barkov, Alexander Barkov scoring the first goal, and then followed that up, Sam Reinert scoring the second goal. Dylan Strom then cut the lead in half as we've still got about 13 minutes and change to play there in that one. End of the second in Columbus. It is the Flyers 2 and the Blue Jackets 2. Uh, Cash and Chris just got done with the Philly with Philly Sports Talk. They've got to be at least glad that their Flyers aren't losing to the Blue Jackets. It is tied, but... Uh, tied at two there as they finish up the second period. And then the only other game going on right now, they are just getting ready to drop the puck in Nashville. It is the Predators two, the wild nothing. Despite 17 shots on net there in the first period, Minnesota failed to get on the board. An outstanding first period for the for the Nashville defense and Juice Soros 
in particular. Soros starting in net tonight, making 17 saves in the first in the first period there. So a good good start all the way around. Well, with all those games going on, the place that I would like to start tonight. We're going to we're going to start in Columbus tonight where it is as I mentioned earlier, it is Philadelphia 2 and the home team Columbus 2. Columbus got off to the lead in that when they were up 2 to nothing before back-to-back goals in the span of about 3 minutes for Philadelphia tied up the game. It's an interesting weekend for the Columbus Blue Jackets and in particular their their newly acquired superstar Johnny Gaudreau. Johnny Gaudreau of course his decision to come to Columbus was the talk of the offseason. Some people, of course, in Calgary, the the thought and thinking was he's going to stay home. He's going to stay here. This is the organization that he, it's the only organization he's ever known, nine years here in Calgary. We'd love for him to stay. A lot of talk that Gaudreau was looking to go out east. Some were thinking on the east coast. Some people, foolishly, thought Philadelphia might be in play for Gaudreau. Uh, other people were were thinking one of the New York, you know, perhaps the Rangers would be nice. One team apparently that was upset that it didn't get Gaudreau was the New York Islanders. Now the Islanders... Of course, they are off to a fantastic start on the season, and we're gonna we're gonna get into some of that with them a little later a little later on. But the Islanders, they currently they're sitting in second place in the Metropolitan Division, behind just the Devils. Another where did that come from team? The Blue Jackets, meanwhile, they have not gotten off to a good start. Just four nine and one in their first fourteen games. Nine points overall. They are in last place in really the entire Eastern Conference. Uh, looking looking at the at the standings as a whole, they are they are in last place in the Metropolitan, and their nine points would put them in last place in the entire Eastern Conference, and tied with the Anaheim Ducks for fewest points in the National Hockey League. Certainly not the start that Columbus was hoping to get off to. It has not necessarily been... You you can't blame it on Gaudreau. Gaudreau has been off to a good start. 12 points in 14 games. Six goals, including six goals so far to start the season. Yet he gets to New York on Saturday night. And while it's it's... Obviously, it's it's not uncommon when you're on the road for the road fans to be hostile towards you. Yeah, that's part of that's part of what's expected as a fan is you want to support your team, and part of that means make trying to make the road team feel uncomfortable. Obviously, there's right ways and wrong ways to do that, but that's a that's not necessarily the discussion we're looking to have tonight. What was confusing for Gaudreau was literally every time he touched the puck while he was while he was playing Saturday night, the Islander fans booed him. Gaudreau even said after the game that he was talking with one of his coaches. He was I I don't get it. Why are they why are they booing me? Well, Gaudreau, during a lot of the offseason, was linked to the Islanders. And Islanders fans took it personally that Gaudreau snubbed them. And he, he shocked everybody by choosing Columbus. Here's the catch, though. 
This is this is from Gaudreau talking to Emily Kaplan of ESPN. Quote, I didn't talk to the Islanders once throughout free agency. So apparently whoever started the rumor of Gaudreau, of Johnny Gaudreau might sign with the Islanders apparently wasn't getting their sources from either Gaudreau's camp or the Islanders. They basically were just making it up. But it but it catches on and fans do what fans are going to do. They're going to run with a story like that. Hey, we might get one of the top young under 30 stars in the game. We were already, you know, close close as it was. This could be the move to put us over the top. And then you find out that he's going to Columbus of all places. Yeah, you can understand why they'd be a little upset at him. But that that kicker, that catch of the Islanders never really approached him about coming to New York, and he never sought out the Islanders in the first place. does make for an interesting wrinkle. So the, the fans feeling snubbed and slighted there in New York, well, maybe take it up with your own management, because apparently they were... Excuse me. Apparently they were never close to signing that 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 was all just made up in the media. That that somebody just made it. Oh, boy. And (laughs) I get the feeling we're not going to be hearing from Zach Puplis tonight. I just see the score. Kentucky and Michigan State are headed to overtime. I bet Pierre is having a fantastic time doing that call. We can uh, you can talk to Pierre about it tomorrow during the show that never sleeps, and I bet he'll be talking about some Islanders too, so you can get his perspective on the Johnny Gaudreau story there as we get that. But I I suspect that this means we're not going to be hearing from one Mister Puplis for a while as that game is is headed into overtime. But for Columbus, then looking at Gaudreau's current team. They're off to a rough start. Certainly one that you weren't expecting them to get on. And injuries, of course, are playing a huge part in that. You know, you're you're talking about losing guys like Zach Wierenski for the entire season. Uh, Patrick Laine has missed time here at the at the early start of the year. You've got you've got some other guys on that blue line. Uh, Nick Blankenberg, of course, going down for multiple weeks. It's hard when you've got so many key players getting hurt to start the year to to get off to a strong start. And as much as we want to believe that. Oh yeah, there's there's time. There's time. We're not even at Thanksgiving yet. It's amazing that at Thanksgiving time just how much is already kind of figured out. And Taryn hops into the hops into the chat. By the way, if you're listening live tonight, Tuesday night in Spreaker, hop on into the chat. It's it's free. There's no cost. You can follow along with us and we can interact that way in the chat room. We can have some fun back. Taryn is asking, is the Ducks season over? Well, I mean, there's nobody worse than them right now. The the Ducks and the Ducks and the Blue Jackets are both both sitting at just nine points. Technically, uh, the Blue Jackets would be ahead of the Ducks because they've played one less game. That's how the, the standings work in the NHL. If you've got the same number of points, They'll look at how many games you played and say, oh, you got that number of points in fewer games. We'll give you the higher spot. So technically, the Anaheim Ducks are right now the worst team in the NHL at 4-10-1. and one. They do play the Red Wings later tonight. We'll see, we'll see what's, uh, what's in store for them. Let's, let's, take a look at the, let's take a look at the lineups 
for that one. Uh, in net, uh, it's uh, Ville Husso for the Red Wings, and it's going to be John Gibson in net for for the Ducks. Um, taking a look at uh, at some of the at some of the game notes here. Tyler Bertuzzi is going to be returning for the Red Wings tonight. He's missed the last 13 games, well, basically a month, with a broken hand. Uh, we've got also for, for the Red Wing, I believe one of the Red Wings, let me double check that. Nope, for one of the, for one of the Ducks, we've got, uh, we've got a defensive man, Lindstrom, day-to-day, um, nothing, nothing else too, too huge there in the notes, uh, a season. Okay. Season, season debut, uh, season debut happening tonight, um, for the, for the Red Wings, Jake Wallman will be making his season debut tonight on the third defensive pairing for the Red Wings. He'll be playing the left defensive man spot there. Um, it's a rough start, certainly, for the Ducks. You know, it's like I like I was just saying there, Taryn. We like to we we like to say and think when we're talking about hockey that oh you know it's a it's a long sport you know it it starts in October but the season doesn't wrap up until April and you play eighty two of these games and you know that it's a it's a long season a lot of things can happen and while that's while none of that is a lie. It is amazing how mu- how important getting off to a good start is, and that Thanksgiving, which you know we're almost there. Thanksgiving time, the end of November, that can re- those first couple months can really be a key indicator of how your season is going to go. So even though you know the Ducks have only played fifteen games, you've still got. 67 of these of assuming I can do math which you know it's not necessarily a given you've still got a huge portion of your season in front of you the the ducks struggle you know it's it's going to be tough for them right now looking you know looking at Looking at at some of their numbers on the year, you know, forty goals so far in in fifteen games. That's under three a night. And meanwhile, you know, you're you're giving up as I pull up the as I pull up the numbers here. You know, you've you've given up sixty seven goals. In 15 games, that's, geez, that's over four. That's over four a night. That's a lot of goal. <laughs> that is a lot of goals to be given up. Gibson is having a rough start to the season, not even saving 90% of his shots. So, you know, as far as are they going to be making a run this season? Yeah, probably, probably not. You know, I wouldn't be looking for the Ducks to to do a whole lot yet this season. Unfortunately, they've they've dug themselves into a they've dug themselves into a deep hole, and it's it's hard, even though the entire season is six months. If you're two months in and you're at the very bottom of the division, that's hard to climb your way out of that. Uh, I'm not going to say that they can't, because I mean, you you look at that division. Obviously, the very top of the division, Vegas is is playing lights out. 
and we'll get into this a little bit more later when we're talking about some of the hot starts. Vegas has been on fire to start the season. 13-3-0 and to start the year in 16 games. 26 points overall, and they are just, they are scoring whenever they want to. You know, just scoring seemingly at will. Jack Eichel is is coming to life there in Vegas. The Kings are having a, a great start to their season, and Seattle is surprising. Seattle is one... I wonder if they're not going to come back down to earth a little bit. They might be out over their skis a little bit. Edmonton, you know they're going to be good. Calgary, you know they're going to be good. So the Pacific Division is a tough division anyway. And for Anaheim to already be at the bottom, that's a tough... It's already a tough mountain to climb, and you've given yourself a hell of a handicap to start the year by by getting off to this slow start. Just four wins in your first 15 games. You know, and and some bad loss, you know, some bad losses in there. You know, eight to five against the Canucks earlier this month. Uh, dropping one to my Blackhawks three to two at the beginning of the month, going back to when the seasons, you know, when the season started, um, you know, look, you know, looking, they've, their schedule has, there's their schedule right out of the gate. Didn't do them a whole lot of favors. You know, they, they, um, You've got the you had the Islanders, the Rangers, the Devils, and the Bruins all right out of the gate, and they took it a task a little bit to start the season. Then, then when you were when you were done hanging out in the New York, New Jersey area, oh, we've just got the Red Wings and the Lightning, and then the Knights. Oh, this will be fine, you know. Just some tough, tough games to get started but they also they just haven't they haven't done themselves any favors you know losing losing to the hawks in you know this month losing to the hawks losing to the canucks um losing to the wild the wild have had a rough start to the season <laughs> basically the ducks are tanking harder than operation desert storm they're having a rough start to the season for sure absolutely you know the yeah and you do have the kings you know you you do have the kings there in la taryn of course color covers all things southern california for us here on ie sports radio so yeah you do have the kings going there for you so you do have that working in your favor for you a little bit, but yeah, it's, it's tough right now for, for the ducks. They're, they're in the midst of a rough season and I mean, nobody's, nobody's going to be easy for them, but after you have the Red Wings tonight, it does get slightly less murderers row for a couple games you got the Jets and then a back to back with the Blues. So you you've got some potential to make up to make up a few points there. You know, get get some things going in your in your favor there for the Ducks. All right, we are going to take ourselves a little bit of a break and then when we come back we've got some other teams that have been hot and cold to start the season. We'll keep uh, we'll keep going with our review. We might pick up a Zach Puplis along the way. We'll find out. And then if nothing else, well, we may have some studs and duds to talk about. All that coming up here on the Neutral Zone. Do not go anywhere. This is IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Hey! 
What's going on, football fans? This is me, your boy Larry B, inviting you to join myself, Callum Reynolds, Mike Pat, and John Felipe for one of the most electrifying football shows you have ever heard. Three and out, right here at IE Sports Radio. Recap of the week before, a preview of what's to come, and of course, three hardcore head to head prompt time face offs. Each week, you don't want to miss it. Are you a fan of Buffalo sports? Are you thinking of changing loyalties and becoming a Buffalo sports fan? Do you even know where Buffalo is on the map? Did you know Canada is closer to Buffalo than New York City? Welcome to the Buffalo Huddle every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and 4 p.m. Pacific Coast Time on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. I'm your host, Patty Bax. This is a podcast designed for you, the passionate sports fan. I know you love your sports. Who doesn't? I cover Buffalo sports and so much more by bringing in the human elements. I call it Buffalo sports with a twist. Join me as we take a journey into the world of Buffalo sports. I guarantee you'll fall in love with Buffalo just like I did. Each week, we start with an inspiration, question of the day, a Buffalo fun fact, and a weekly challenge to you, the listener. Come huddle up with me every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and 4 p.m. Pacific Coast Time for the Buffalo Huddle with Patty Bax on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. As we say in Buffalo, Go Bills! Sports Radio. It is your direct feed for all that is sports. It is Philly Sports Talk with Cash and Chris every Tuesday night right here on IE Sports Radio. Your direct feed for all that is sports. Philly Sports Talk with Cash and Chris is the most comprehensive view on Philadelphia sports exclusively right here on IE Sports Radio. You know what it is. Your direct feed for all that is sports. Tuesday night, IE Sports Radio, Philly Sports Talk with Cash and Chris. What is going on, everybody? My name is Harrison Glazer. And we're coming at you from the show that never sleeps podcast. I cover the Jets, the Islanders, the Nets, and the Yankees. This is Pierre Moss, and I cover the Mets, Knicks, Rangers, and the Giants. Our show is live every Wednesday through Spreaker and a bunch of other ways to get our content. 
again, we're the Show That Never Sleeps podcast. We talk about all those New York sports. It's a lot of fun. We get into all of it. Please tune in. Again, that's Wednesdays at 6 p.m. And we look forward to having you guys right here on Night Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is for us. Hello, ladies and sinners. Hello, sports fans around the world. Hello, IE Sports family. This is Cal Henderson, the host of IE Vegas, the Sin City Sports Show, presented by IE Sports Radio. If you folks are interested in sports in the Vegas area, if you're wanting to have a blast for one hour every Tuesday night from 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time to 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, this is a show built for the Vegas sports fans where we feature the Las Vegas Raiders, the Las Vegas Golden Knights, the Las Vegas Aces, and the University of Las Vegas, Nevada Rebels. Hopefully, fingers crossed, MLB team coming soon. Either way, if you folks are looking to have a blast for one hour each and every week, tune in Tuesday, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time to 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. If you folks are interested in Vegas sports news, Go to our Twitter, at SinCities underscore I-E-S-R, and you can speak with me, the host, Kale Henderson, at Kale underscore Henderson on Twitter. At any time, be happy to reply. Always want to reach out to our fans. Again, the Sin City Sports Show, presented by IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. And indeed, you can catch Kale coming up right after us here tonight on IE Sports Radio with Sin City talking all things Vegas. I know Kale will be on full tilt about the Raiders, but maybe we'll be able to convince him to start the show off with the Vegas Golden Knights like we did last week. Uh, I I jumped onto his show right at the start. He was all geared up and ready to to just blast the Raiders. And I asked him about the Golden Knights. And all of a sudden, his tone changed dramatically. And he was super excited and super great. So maybe we'll be able to... No, now that I even say that, no. No, after that loss the Raiders had yesterday, no. There's there's no way. And they deserve to go on, to go on full blast for Kale to just unload on them. Adam Karnick here with you on the neutral zone for about another 20 minutes or so before we turn things over to kale it is just going to be me for the rest of the night zach puplis is michigan state spartans well they're headed to double overtime against kentucky yeah we wouldn't want zach to be you know dividing his attentions there we're better off we're better off just staying like we are tonight so we'll we'll hear from zach next week when when sparty's not going to double overtime against the wildcats on that so having some fun there with that game so i wanted to talk some about the hall of fame there were six new members to the hockey hall of fame introduced yesterday in toronto and the speeches, those can, you know, Hall of Fame speeches sometimes, and this is this is true in all sports, of course, sometimes they can be very blasé, they can be very rah, 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 go team, I love my family, it was amazing, I got to play for the best fans in the world, the very cut and dry, cookie cutter, yeah. Other times, though, you get to actually, the, the athletes will, will let their guards down a little bit and they'll, they'll let you in on some of themselves. They'll let their personalities come out a little bit. Uh, one that I'll, I'll never forget, it's not a hockey one, but, you know, we like to cross-pollinate on this show. I am a diehard Bears fan. I host Chi-Town Weekly on Monday nights right here on IE Sports Radio. 
every week. And I remember when Brian Erlacher was inducted into the NFL Hall of Fame a few years ago, and he told stories that people whose job it was to report on him and cover him for a living, whose job it was to be friendly with him, and not just so that they could get the, you know, obviously professionals they could get their stories out, but they would, you know, they would become his friends and 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 work with him and develop relationships. There were things about him that they never knew in twenty years of knowing the man that they never knew about him. He really opened to the door and really let people in. And in in the hockey hall of fame yesterday. There were, there were certainly there were certainly moments where everybody got to let themselves be themselves a little bit. You had Rika Salonen. Uh, get get into the Hall of Fame. You know, one of the one of the best women to play hockey. Get into the hall. Get into the Hall of Fame. You know, she she won an Olympic medal after taking ten years off of hockey. That's impressive. <laughs> yeah, great. You know, there were some great stories that came up. But I wanted to share a few of them here. Uh, Daniel Alfredson. Uh, talked about in his very first NHL training camp with the Ottawa Senators back in 1995. He was so nervous that he left his skates in Sweden. (laughs) Here he is, this, this young kid in Ontario, Canada, and you realize, it's one thing to, whoops, I left something at home, and then it's another to realize, no, I left them at home home. Across an ocean. <laughs> uh, you had one of my personal favorites came from Roberto Luongo, the the goalie that I'll always think of him as being the Vancouver Canucks goalie. Though he's he honestly he spent more time with the with the Panthers than with the Canucks, but he was the Canucks goalie when the Canucks were basically playing rivals to the Blackhawks when I was first getting into hockey. And Luongo talked about how it was a family affair for him and his you know, everybody Mom, dad, grandma, grandpa were involved in in getting him to where he was and and his brothers too. You know, he talked about how his brothers would they would play hockey down in the basement and how they would destroy the walls in their house from just blasting slap shots against it. Um his grandfather bought him his first set of goalie pads. Um My favorite part from Luongo's speech was he talked about his grandmother. She played goalie against him, and but she didn't have a a a stick or a or a glove. Instead, she would use an oven mitt and a frying pan to play goalie. And that that image of of your grandma standing there playing goalie. Oven mitt in one hand, and then frying pan in the other. Uh, <laughs> this, I don't mean this joke to be in poor taste, but I, 
I can't help but you scored a goal on me and then that frying pan being shaken at young Roberto. It's just a, a lovely, a lovely image that just pops into my head there. Seeing that. And especially, you know, he's he's an Italian too, so his grandmother of being that descent, I'm sure emotions always ran high in that household. He also, of course, thanked his family, thanked his wife. But it was also interesting he loved getting in not just get not just getting into the hockey hall of fame, but he was he mentioned how when he got the call the first thing he wanted to know was if the Sedin twins had gotten in also Henrik and Daniel Sedin twin brothers that got to be teammates for 17 years in Vancouver That's just such a such a cool thing. And you'd you'd watch them out there and you'd hear the broadcasters, you know, Daniel passes to Daniel passes to Henrique. Henrique over to Daniel. And what made their speeches fun, of course, is they continued the debate of who was better. And Henrique took advantage of the fact that that he he was the last to speak on it. So he got to settle the debate, if you will. And and Henrique brought up that you know he only I missed 30 games during my career. Daniel's production was not the same. In 2010, Daniel missed 20 games with a concussion. I had 11 goals and 9 assists in those 20 games. So with Daniel, I was barely a 20 goal scorer. Without him, I would have been a 45 goal scorer. <laughs> so <laughs> Henrik trying to get the final word there. On, on who was better, Daniel or Henrique. But just a lot of fun from the Hockey Hall of Fame this this past weekend. So congratulations to all of them. And I'd be I'd be remiss too if I don't bring up Herb Carnegie. Uh, Carnegie, he's, he's a lot of things to refer to. He's, he's the best black player that never made it to the NHL. And he posthumously got to be awarded into the Hall of Fame yesterday. You know, so congratulations to to everybody in the class, and thank you for for sharing the stories and making it making it fun, making it a, a fun event overall. All right, we're going to take a quick peek over at the scores because a lot of the games that we were talking about beforehand. Quite a few of them have gone final, so we want to we want to take a quick peek at the at the scoreboard. Some have gone final. Some are headed for overtime. Headed for overtime, the Stars and the Lightning they're tied at four. Goalies optional in that one. Well, technically they've got a couple of seconds left in regulation, but it's looking like that's probably headed for overtime. Some actual genuine finals. The Devils whooped on Montreal five to one. 
up there in northern Canada. Their fellow countrymen, the Maple Leafs, 5-2 to two over the Penguins. A great, just a great night to be in Canada because the Canucks held on to win 5-4 to four in Buffalo. Then the Florida Panthers beat up on the Washington Capitals 5-2 to two as well. So, so, so some games going final here tonight. Uh, Verhage scoring the last two goals there for the Panthers. That allowed them to, to clinch that game. For the Canucks, ultimately the, the winning goal there would ultimately go to Braden Ho- to Bo Horvat would ultimately get the game winning goal but a nice job by Buffalo came up a little short they they got it close they got it to 5-4 but could not could not punch that last one in to tie it and the Flyers and the Blue Jackets are tied at 4 with 8 minutes to go in the game so we've got Got some good action going on tonight. Philly has come all the way back to tie it at four apiece as we're under eight minutes to go in that one. The Stars and Lightning indeed are headed uh, headed to overtime, so we'll see what happens there with that one. Real quick, as I'm seeing the time left on the clock here for our show, and I don't want us to head into overtime because we've got Kale Henderson coming right up after us with Sin City Sports. Uh, who knows? He, he might be talking some Vegas. They are they are going to be dropping the puck against San Jose during his show. He might do a little bit of a preview uh, in between just blasting Josh McDaniels and the Raiders. But we'll do a, a very quick abridged edition of Studs and Duds here tonight. Just a, a couple on either side here. A couple of, stud, a couple of duds. We'll start their power play units. My, what happened to power plays in this past week? The, the Blackhawks last night in their loss to the Hurricanes, they were shut out 3 to nothing. They were 0 for 4 on the power play. You know, you, you convert a couple of those. Hey, suddenly that's a game. You don't get, you don't get shut out then. But the big one, the huge dud for me, the Ottawa Senators, they lost to the Islanders 4-2 last night. They were 1-6 for on the power play. And it, and it, it wasn't just like, oh, well, you know, a lot of these were just, oh, they were, you know, some... Can really condensed power plays. No, they had 11 minutes of penalty time to play off. How do you go one for six on the power play? That is that is brutal. That is brutal. So some duds there. Power play units for Chicago and for Ottawa. My goodness. Shoot the puck. Something. Do something there. Then a couple of studs as we as we head our way out of the show tonight. I already mentioned one of them. John Tavares scored career goal number 400 earlier tonight. Congratulations to John Tavares of the Toronto Maple Leafs. It was the it was the first goal in that game. I'm just looking to see if he got another one tonight. Just the 13th active player to hit that milestone and he did not he did not have more than that. He just had the one, but that was a big one. 400th career goal for John Tavares. So congratulations to the captain there for that. And then Alexander Ovechkin. Eh, Alexander Ovechkin just keeps doing Alexander Ovechkin things. Uh, we didn't we didn't talk about it much uh, tonight on the show, but he just keeps getting closer and closer and closer to the great one. So I just want to mention him and another stud there for the Washington Capitals.
All right, there it is. You heard the horn. That does it for our show tonight. Some thank yous, of course, to our Patreon supporters, Bay Area Raised, Emlos Great, Key to the Gate, and Anonymous. Thank you for your continued support. Please go to our website, iesportsradio.com. You will find our Patreon link there. It starts at just $5 a month. Please, if you are at all able, that helps us out a lot. It Obviously, it keeps the lights on. It allows us to do all the things that we do, but it also allows us to expand live calls. Our partnership with USRN, they do hockey calls several times a week. Be sure to check out their schedule uh, and updates there for games. Friday night is usually a big night for hockey over on USRN and sometimes right here on IESR on our Mixler.com page. Thank you to Larry B and all the hard work he does with everything going on at the station, keeping everybody afloat. He was a busy man this morning. He got started at 6 o'clock in the morning, his time, doing three and out, getting us all caught up on all things football. And then I know that he keeps up with everybody throughout the day today as well. So thank you, sir. Thank you to Taryn for hanging out with us in the chat room here tonight. Appreciate that. Finally, thank you for coming here and listening. We had, a, I hope, I hope you had as much fun as I did. I enjoyed this. I had a lot of fun with this. I hope you did as well. I hope it came across. So thank you for listening here. Follow along with us on Twitter at IESR Neutral Zone. I am at Adam underscore Karnick. Zach is at the Pupless. We should both be back next Tuesday night having some fun in our usual assortment of hijinks and silliness all centered around a hockey show coming up next it is kale henderson and sin city sports he's going to be talking all things las vegas raiders but i bet we can get him to do a little bit of a preview of the golden knights as they get ready to take on the sharks until next week i am adam karnick for ie sports radio everybody have a great night stay out of the penalty box and we will see you next time right here in the neutral zone